All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Welcome back. Yeah. So, Die, um, die Hard 4, yeah. was it good? I, I, um, live Free or... Wait. Oh, A Good Day to Die Hard? Yeah. Yeah, it's a good film. It's got a couple of uh, twists in there that I didn't, didn't see coming. As far as action, violence, language, it's good. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not saying that Live Free is a bad film. It's just, it's a tad better. Hmm. Now, then again, you know, the um, Live Free, it's got some good action in it. And I personally, I, my, my favorite scene from that film is uh, when um, John McClane, he, he's, at, he, he's driving a car and, and there's a helicopter off in, in, in the distance run by one of the henchmen and his uh, instinct to, to take care of that helicopter which is basically just run the, the vehicle up on the ramp that's uh, that I believe it's uh, connected right underneath the the like a, it's an underground tunnel and there's a ramp that's sort of angled as you, you leave the tunnel and he jumps out of the vehicle just as it starts to go up on it and he basically lands right into the helicopter. I thought that was an interesting action sequence based on memory. Now, I haven't mm. seen, you know, it's been a while. I mean, I'm, I'm, I do plan on w watching Die Hard 4 again. Mm. Um, anyways, uh, well, there was a new Nostalgia Crick episode this week. And it was basically him reviewing um, Pearl Harbor, Michael Bay's film. It's got a good, a lot of funny moments in it. Oh, yeah. It. I had to actually pause the video because I was laughing so hard in, <laughs> in uh, that movie. What was your uh, favorite well, uh, in-joke? Well, there's this one scene in Pearl Harbor where he... Um, well, it's not pro. It's nostalgic critic playing Michael Bay, and basically he shows the stereotypical black guy and the stereotypical female. <laughs> and I just started laughing. I thought that was hilarious. I that was absolutely funny as how the watch is like. So I'm like, okay, this, and I literally because it's like you see, and you're just like, I have to pause the video because I was laughing so hard because it's just like it's so Michael Bay. It's does not surprise me. I mean, it's like just you, if you once you watch it, you'll be you'll just be laughing at times hysterically hard how funny some of that stuff is and how true it is about Michael Bay. And the critic does lose it a few times uh, during his review. He goes, "Oh no, I am not dealing with this. You are insulting our troops, Bay, by doing this shit." And he just loses it. It's, oh, it's funny as hell to watch. So a uh, stereotypical black and. Uh... Their typical female. Let me guess. For the female, they are just eye candy for people to, to gawk at and fantasize. Yeah. And with the blacks, it's uh, he he makes them look like they're complete morons. You know, like they're well, useless or something. Is that what how he how well, he did it? Well, the well the female had two balloons in her freaking bra. It made it look like her breasts were huge. And the black guy, it was a he was acting. He was basically saying dialogue no one would ever say in real life the black I was so I was just like oh my god this is so fucking bay right here and it's not even it's too true oh yeah well speaking of um uh, no not that um that was my cat again I swear um speaking of that of being insulted by that that made me re re remind myself well actually that reminded me of um a trailer I saw <clears throat> for a film, I don't know what, but I believe the title is 42. It's a baseball film, but this is the real kicker that pissed me off. I don't have a problem with with, with them redoing the, the whole narrative of you got a black guy and he's not being treated, you know, fairly, and, and it's one of those, you know, to, to make people feel guilty, you know, like you know. You know, like racism is still there, but it's ba you know it's more like based in 
back in like the I think the fifties, sixties, you know, that time era. I mean, I don't know who the baseball player is supposed to be about, but um, it's got Harrison Ford in it. And here's the thing that pissed me off with it is you know, not only is it an old, outdated you know story. Yeah, we've heard it a hundred times. You know, someone, you know, like uh, that one with uh, Cuba Gooding Jr., where he was this deep sea diver. I, it was with uh, Robert Downey Jr., not Robert Downey, um, Robert De Niro. You know, that film dealt with racism and rising above that. You know, here it's redoing again, but instead of being serious about it, what do they do in the background? They're playing hip hop style music you know that uh that kind of tone of you know the stereotype so n not only do they play the, ra the the race card thing where they you know apparently we're not you know in tune with you know accepting people you know that's bullshit i mean i i i know racism still exists and and i view that as hey people are ignorant you know it's always going to be there but not everybody, or not everyone is a racist. I'm not a racist. Mm -hmm. But uh, all I'm saying with that is, well, I, mean, I like baseball. I like films about baseball, but it's a instead of being serious about it, they got in, insulted by inserting that kind of music in there. I ser seriously doubt there would be, you know, that that kind of music, you know. In a period that was, I assume, what happened in in the fifties, because I I think it's supposed to be based in the uh, like the fifties or sixties. I can't tell, because because you got like there's a black dude on a baseball team with a bunch of white people who are saying you don't belong on this team, and the opposite opposite uh, team smacks him with the in the in the face with a baseball. And uh, some people making threatening remarks like, you know, what would you do? What would you? Would you what would, uh, excuse me. <laughs> what would you do if they threw a baseball at you? You know, like if they tried to hit you with the baseball, he'd say, "A duck." You know, basically saying he's acknowledging that they, he's trying to intimidate him, like to, I guess convince him to get off the team, and he's not going to it. But. Uh, Seriously, why do they got to go, go that route? Mm, well, honestly, I'm going to, like, uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't really, some of this is just like, meh. But, um. Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing with environmental so, <laughs> environmental films. Trying to make us feel guilty, like, we got to be more in tune with uh, keeping the world clean, you know. Don't, you know, leave trash out on the floor that kind of guilt or, or with violence and now, now it's they're doing you know st another story mm. about race I mean yeah. are, are is um, is Hollywood trying to make us feel guilty purposely no, that's Hollywood uh, they don't really they're full of idiots and I do mean they are full of complete and utter morons because well, admit they're talking about racism, yet they're in a film that can be considered very racist at times. It yeah, because yeah, if they're doing that, then technically isn't that keeping the whole thing alive, you know, in, yeah. in, in perspective? Because, I mean, because I, I look at it, at it like this way with um, terror, ter, you know, terrorism. Um, it, sometimes the news brings up stories on you know, people making bombs, and and I'm thinking to myself, why even talk about that? Because by bringing it, bringing that up, you're informing people, like like myself, which you know, I in no form will ever be a terrorist because I love my country. But second, I had no idea that you could even look up on the internet how to make mm. a bomb. So people are going to be going, wow, you can make a bomb just by looking it up on the internet and get the parts mm. for it. Same thing with, um, with with racism. If you keep doing stories like that, then th there's going to be ignorant people who will think, well, 
maybe this certain person doesn't belong to, in doing this activity or this uh, form of work. You know, it, it, it's uh, implanting that. It, it's uh, not implanting, but, you know, giving some people who might be ignorant might end up becoming racist because of that. Well, anyways, um, uh, I'd rather just not get into the topic of this shit. It's just way too, uh, it's like, I just don't, just don't want to talk about it anymore, but, uh, anything else? Let's see. Oh, yeah, hold on. Anime? Yeah, oh, yeah, I wanted to bring this one up of, uh, I guess this will be our last topic for the night, but, um, just a couple of few animes I've been watching that I kind of recommend people picking up and just checking out. Um, I'm watching Saint Seiya right now. That's a that's a good series. That's a good one. I think it's an 80s anime, and it, the animation style definitely shows it's an 80s one. It screams 80s all the way. But it's a good one. That's a good one to watch. I'll probably do a quick review of that once after I finish it. So that's a good one. Um, Space Pirate Moto. I did review this one, but... This is one people should really give a check out to. Uh, Space Pirate Moto is actually a fun little series. It's a little space adventure. It reminds me a lot of Star Wars. That's a fun one to watch. Um, what else? Uh, Witchblade is a interesting show. Sex, uh, sex and all, <laughs> in that one. Um, but, but you said there's sex and well, witchcraft. Witchblade. It's like kind of. It's basically girls with armor all over their body, really sexy armor, and they fight each other. Oh. You could play pretty much porno music and it would just fit the series perfectly with Witchblade. Because <laughs> they get horny when they get in their armor. It's just like, damn, girl. So, yeah, there's that one. Um, What else? Uh, Bamboo Blade, that's a good series. It's a fun one to watch. Um, And so on and so forth. I'll get more into this later on, but I just want a few animes to bring up for people to check out if you guys are looking interested. But, yeah. I've been continuing with the uh, with the shuffle, but there's one that that one character. Uh, what's his name? The, the one that's supposed to be a uh, a friend of Ren, the nerd, the nerdy guy. Oh uh, yeah, him. He he comes sometimes he comes across as a pedo, you know, because he, yeah he, yeah 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 sometimes he, or not not oh you couldn't call him strictly a pedo, but he he, he would. He would fall into that category because it's a little creepy that he he, uh, he he sometimes talks about the uh, that that younger character the uh, what was her name that she she's the one she, oh, she her is, uh, I forgot her name she's got silver hair and she has a, a teddy bear a st- not not teddy bear a a, a plush cat. Which it, the show does explain why she has a uh, stuffed cat, but uh, sometimes he just out of nowhere he brings up you know that so is so or so would look great in a school swimsuit you know the the, the, sc- the swim team swimsuit I'm going like she looks like she's ten or eleven years old why are you fantasizing about that I mean, think I mean, well, it's one thing that he doesn't ever, or so far, I hope he never does talk about anything mm. sexual, like with that young character. But just to bring up, they would look great in this kind of a swimsuit. Really, you're gonna go there. <sighs> but yeah. I, uh... Shuffle is a good one. I really like that one. I'm not gonna. That's a good one to watch. Um, the Indi- How far are you on it? Um, let's see. I think. Well, I'm currently on disc three of it. I think um, the third episode on the disc. Hmm. I mean, 